Hey everybody, Keith K here, and today I've got a new game for you, Zombie Cure Lab. This is a early access game, so it's still under development. Um, and you can see here that I actually have the playtest version as I got a key from the publisher, so thank you to Aerosoft. Um, and it's a different take on the zombie games. Here we're trying to, as the name suggests, cure the zombies. We're not trying to kill them. Uh, so let's get started and we'll check out how to play a new game. So there is some onboarding here to help you understand, uh, you know, what's going on, how to play, and what the context is. And, you know, as it says here, uh, there was a zombie infestation. Nobody really knows why. Uh, in, in, in northern Canada, there is a lab that is trying to cure the zombies, and we're going to be working with that lab, uh, and you'll see more on them later. All right, so now we're going to go out into the field. And this is the map that you're going to interact with. These are uh, different levels of difficulty, essentially. We'll go through the tutorial today. So you're going to click the game you want to play, and we'll start a new lab. I really like this loading screen that shows you their roadmap. I think it'd be pretty cool if other games did that. Okay, so we've been overrun by zombies. We're in Canada, and we need to find a cure. And the way the cure works in this game is you have to bring your zombies through several stages of evolution before they make human. So there'll be humbies, uh, these three levels of humbies, and it'll make more sense as we go. So the tutorial has several things that it'll walk you through as every tutorial does. The first is to move around. We're just using the normal keys for that. You can zoom out and you can zoom in and then you can use E and Q to rotate uh, which does come in handy. One of the things you want to look for is where's the tunnel. Uh, different games will have different tunnels uh, where they are in the map. I like to orientate myself towards the tunnel uh, and the zombies will come out of the tunnel and they have a preference for uh, gates. So I always like to place the gate facing the tunnel. Let's just make sure there's a sign on here somewhere. Press L to rotate. Can't tell where the sign is. Oh well. We'll just place it here to start. And that'll get built. Uh, you have your play uh, speed controls down here and you can press space to pause and to restart as is kind of typical. You've got a lot of resources to manage down here. Um, at first glance it seems like there's a lot going on but it get, you get used to it pretty quickly. Now the first thing we've got to build are harvesting uh, production buildings. So we've got to have a resource camp and a hauling post to do that. Okay so we're gonna go to our production, our build menu, excuse me, which is over here in the lower right hand corner. And then along the side here, you have your different types of buildings. You have your defense, your production, your electricity, um, corridors and doors, kitchen, science, bedroom, skill training room, and then some uh, decorations. But right now we want to build a resource camp and a hauling post. So first you'll select the resource camp and you'll see that it shows you the range that it has, and I think we'll put our first one up here. I don't want to damage too many resources in the process. Put it here. There we go. And this is nice because we have a couple of pickup trucks which have ice packs. Ice packs are going to be important for capturing zombies because we have to freeze them first. Uh, then the other thing we have to build is the hauling post, so that is right here. And this has a bigger range, but essentially they can grab materials from your uh, different buildings and move them where they're needed. So let's put this one a little bit in the, uh, looks good. And you'll see there's a little footprint that shows you where the human or the humby that's working is going to face. So you want to make sure that that's not blocked because that's how they access that building. 
All right, now we're gonna wait until we fill up uh, 200 wood, 80 vegetables, and 30 glow berries. So we have plenty of glow berries and plenty of wild vegetables. Um, they're represented by a carrot, but they're actually just vegetables in general. And we can tailor what we want them to go after. Like right now we don't need ore. We're not, we don't need chemicals. Uh, we'll let everything else just stay on here. And then we'll speed this up and come back as soon as that's done. Okay, now the next set of objectives are dealing with worker assignment. And we'll step through what each one of these are um, as we go through the objectives over here. But you can read through this as you play it, and it'll kind of explain it for you. Uh, let's go ahead and pause while we do this. So we want to assign more workers to the resource camp, unassign workers from the hauling camp, manage the shift of the main storage and change job categories on the resource camp. So what does all that mean? So let's start with the resource camp. You can see that you have three workers assigned here and you we have nine unassigned workers. That's what this essentially means, as you can see, available workers. So you can click down here to assign any worker that's available. So we're gonna add two to meet that objective. And you can see they have a question mark next to them. When you have um, no available workers, it'll just look like this. So it, you, as you play further, you'll find that you have more uh, tasks than workers. So you have to come in here and manage these. You might have to unassign some of these um, in order to you know, get enough workers to cover everything you wanna cover. Now, um, you can change the priority of every building on here. So it's, you know, what workers will focus on. And as they say, uh, on all of these, workers will still do things to fulfill their needs. So they still will step away to sleep and eat and exercise or whatever else they need to do. You can shut off a particular one, a uh, particular type of resource in terms of what to be harvested. So as I said earlier, uh, we turned off ore because we don't need that and chemicals, we don't need that right now. Now there's a day and night shift. You can specify if the worker's available to work both day and night and whether you want them to pick up resources that are coming from uh, this building and whether they should be harvesting. So you can shut some of these off. Like you might want one worker that's just collecting resources from the ground and bringing them somewhere. Um, but let's unpause this. You'll see these get filled and they'll start working, okay? And then on the hauling station, we'll look at how to unassign workers. So it's asking us to unassign two workers here. And here the choices are a little bit different. You still have the day and night shift, but then the questions or the assignments that you can um, turn on and off are refilling resources to different objects. So you'll see that with uh, the snowball thrower that we'll look at later, taking resources, picking up resources and transporting frozen zombies. Um, or Hoombies as they uh, occur. So we need to change. All right, so we've done that. Now we're gonna go back to, or sorry, we're gonna go to the main storage. These workers assigned here will build or repair and or repair, right? So these are your builders. If you don't have enough um, workers assigned here, they won't build anything, right? You'll put structures down and they won't complete. So this objective is asking us to set two of our workers to day only. So presumably they might man uh, the defenses, right, if they're day only. And then the last thing, we're gonna go back to the resource camp and change two workers to pick up only. So they won't harvest, they'll just ferry resources back and forth. All right, as I mentioned earlier, there are things that you need to build in order to take care of your workers, right? So we need to build a kitchen and we need to build a bedroom. Uh, they need a dining table to be able to eat and they need beds to sleep and couches to get refreshed. Uh, so we'll walk through how to do that here. Um, so the kitchen they want to be 10 by 10. So we go back to our build tools over here. We go down to kitchen, and then you wanna make sure you have the room selected. Um, these will destroy some resources, so we'll start over here in the corner. 
and just go 10 by 10. Okay, it'll tell you how much of your resources it's going to consume. You go ahead and approve that. And then workers from your main storage uh, will come and transport resources over here and build the room. These trees and glowberries will stay here until the room is complete. Now it doesn't say it in the objectives here, but you do need to put a door on the room. So let's go ahead and put two doors, one there and one at the middle there. It'll make sense why later. Um, well, I'll just tell you, we're going to put the bedroom adjacent to it. So we want a door that goes to the bedroom and it's the same process. So we go down here, choose bedroom tools, build tools, choose the room tool. And here we're going to lay overlay the wall that we have set up. So we'll use the same wall and we'll go over another 10 by 10 here. Again, it tells us how many resources that's going to require, and we can just approve that, and our workers will start building it. So now we have a door between the two, a main entry, and then we'll need a door over here. The bedroom. That's fine. And you still see we still have some workers that aren't occupied, what we could do is build another, you could either build another uh, resource camp, or maybe one outside, expand our range. So you can see here, it's not overlapping with this resource camp, but it is overlapping with the hauling post. But since this one is outside, let's, just have one worker working on it. And I'll speed this up and come back when these rooms are ready. Okay, the kitchen's been completed, so let's go ahead and put down a dining table. Again, we'll go to our build tools, go to kitchen, and there are various items here, or structures we can put inside the kitchen. Uh, and the dining table, for example, can go here and again you see where there's little feet that shows us where the um, humans uh, will approach from uh, where the workers will approach from so we've got to leave those clear so they can get to them uh, one thing worth mentioning is that you know I could place this in here but it won't function because it's the wrong room type uh, you also can change your room type. I could change this to a bedroom if I wanted to, and this dining table would no longer function. Um, and the room type kind of defines what you see on the walls here. And you want to leave enough room because there's several structures, if you saw, that we'll want to put in here eventually. So there's a meat cultivator and a feeding pile. Um, for the uh, humbies that um, we'll need to build in here at some point. All right, I'll come back when these are wrapped up. All right, now we can see that our bedroom's been finished. And one quick note, it is nighttime, uh, but there's no zombies coming. The first night, you don't have to worry about it. So we can just let our workers do what they're doing. And we can continue on with the tutorial. So we need five beds and a couch. So we go back to the bedroom building tool. Let's grab our couch first. It's a little, little TV area for our workers. And then let's take a look at, just lay down a row of beds here. Get it, I get it all the way back and then you see the little feet that they're going to need that room to have access. Yeah, it looks like we can fit all five in this 10 by 10, so that works out perfectly. I 
think this is telling us it needs resources. Yeah, it's missing wood. We're just going to have to wait for some wood to be gathered. Okay, and now we're on to our next set of objectives, which is to build a science room. So this is where all the research gets done, and that will uh, accumulate research points for us that we obviously can spend on upgrades. In order to do research, we have to build research desks inside of a science room, which is the next set of uh, objectives along with, we're going to uh, build a bellow breezer, so we'll have to research that. It's basically what this is explaining here. And I think we can just make this an extension just like the other room types. You go down to the science room here. Let's. Um, so they'll share a wall and we'll go 10 by 10 again. Well, it looks like we've got to save up some wood. So we'll wait there. It won't build right away. That's okay. Let's put another door in across from that one. And then another door I want that one over on the side. Make sure we've got as many people gathering resources as we can have. Yeah, we're good there. Let's add a few to this one. And all our builders. Let's add some to hauling. There. Yeah, we've got everybody productive. We've got our kitchen, our bedroom set up. We'll come back as soon as our science room is ready. You can see we have the day-night cycle and <clears throat> the time is down here and the day's played is here and we can see when the uh, upcoming event of the 19 strong zombies will attack. So we're just gonna keep an eye on that and uh, when it gets close, we're gonna call all of our workers back using the lab lockdown button. So our science lab is almost done. All right, I'm going to pause it because we do want to make as much progress as we can with this. We need three uh, research desks. So let's go ahead and, and we're going to need room for this treatment chamber. You can see it's pretty big. So I'm going to try to reserve this side for the treatment cha uh, chamber so we don't have to move things around. Let's see if we can fit three in here. And there. And now because we want to get this research done before night, let's prioritize these. So we're going to go ahead and mark these as top priority. So if we build anything else, the workers from the main storage will deal with this first. And you can see they don't have anybody assigned to them yet because they're not built. Okay. So let's start unassigning. Let's unassign at least three people. Because what they have to do is they have to bring glowberries over here and then do the research. So you can see one of them just brought some glowberries over, and the other one, the second one, has started doing research. So both of these little squares need uh, access, they need to be reachable, you know. Um, the workers need to be able to path to them in order for that structure to produce what it's supposed to. So we need 50 research. We got three right now. And we need this last desk built. Looks like we're short wood again. But that's okay. We'll just let that run until we get a little closer. All right, we're getting close to completing our research. One other thing I wanted to show you is you can prioritize resources. So 
We're going to prioritize getting these two pickup trucks because they have ice packs. And you can see we've already collected eight ice packs, but we want to get as many as we can because that's, um, that's really our ammo uh, <clears throat> when it comes down to it. All right, so now we have our 50 research. We can research a bellow breezer. You access research through this little molecule icon over here. And then you have your various research trees. For the bellow breezer, um, that is under production because it's going to produce our ice packs. And you can see there's a whole line here. Uh, but we'll start with the bellow breezer. So it requires 180 wood, 15 stone. We can see that we have everything to complete that research. And it will create 2.5 ice packs per hour. Um, and research is instantaneous. So we don't have to wait now to build our bellow breezer. We can go straight to our defenses and we'll see that it now, uh, sorry, production is what I meant. Uh, bellow breezer, yep. So we're gonna go ahead and build this. Same thing here where you wanna take a look at where uh, the feet and the um, supply access need to be. So I think we can put these right here. That should work just fine. And this is kind of critical supply. So we're gonna want, let's, let's go ahead and deselect, deassign a couple folks from there. Okay, so now we're looking at defense in the tutorial. So you will lose the game if all your workers are turned into zombies or your main storage building is destroyed. Um, so we've got our fence up, but we need some active defenses. It'll take the zombies some time to break through that fence, um, but you, you also want to be able to freeze them so that you can cure them. And it also means that they'll do less damage to your structures that you have to then repair. Um, and as I said earlier, it's those ice packs that you can find in some of the things that you can scavenge or create with our bellow breezer. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, when it, we get close to this event of the zombies showing up, we're going to lock down our base. All our workers will return and they'll stay inside the perimeter. Um, you can actually see what is considered safe by clicking on this little icon over here. Uh, as you expand your base or you could build other, you know, you could build another fenced in area if you chose to. All right, so the last thing we have to do for this set of objectives is to build a, under defense, we're going to build a snowball shooter. You can see that this requires wood and metal, but also consumes power. Um, so we do need to look at our main storage, which will tell us how much power we've got banked. As you can see, there's some batteries up here. There's a uh, solar panel. So this is generating some electricity and storing it for us. Now for the tutorial, we won't have to worry about it, but as you play um, other you know, games outside of the tutorial, you will need to um, provide other electrical generation structures. But for this, um, for today, for this, this game, all we need to do, let's rotate this so it's facing Where's our gate? Our gate's right here. So I kind of want this coverage area to be as close to the gate as possible. All right. And we can see that we're not in an electrified area. So it's going to tell us if we don't do it. But let's just go ahead and go to our build menu, the electricity category, and select the power pole. Now you can see those little green uh, lines coming off of other poles to show you how far you can go. You can't run a line all the way out here. As you can see, it turns kind of orange. Once it turns yellow, it's connected itself to um, another pole, right? So this is going to walk through what I just said about electricity. So let's go ahead and get this. We want to put it such that it's connected, but also I'd like to have the option of connecting a second 
snowball shooter. So I tend to put that, I'll put that there. Um, shouldn't block the way of our, our workers. Yeah, I see the signs on the wrong side. I couldn't tell, but that's fine. All right, so now we need to get ready for our zombie uh, attack. And I talked through this before. Um, captured zombies will go three through three stages of cures to human. And um, we have to progress them you know, through each phase by both researching the advanced lab. And then once you research the advanced lab, you can research the serum and the chamber, the treatment chamber to put them into. So we're gonna need three treatment chambers in total. Let me just pause this. Uh, we can see this up here. One, two, three, actually four. Yeah, this last one will transform our uh, humbies into humans. Um, so we're not going to do that right now. We're just going to try to capture a zombie and get them into the treatment chamber. But you would repeat this process outside of the, the tutorial. Now you can see that um, we really only need night shift workers. We don't have anybody assigned here. So let's make some day shift workers. Everybody up here should be a day shift worker. And let's take one off. So we have a few available to help. Uh, we're also going to build a treatment chamber. So that goes in our science room. If you remember, I was saying we need to make room for this or leave room for it. So we'll come in here go to our science menu. We have our treatment chamber. And again, we have a lot of access that needs to be provided for. So uh, that should be okay there. And it looks like it's short wood. Um, once that's built, much like uh, with the glowberries here where they had to bring some glowberries over, they will have to bring some supplies to the treatment chamber. We also need to connect it to the power grid. So just like our snowball shooter here, uh, we're gonna need to go to the electric menu, get a power pole. And it seems a little strange, but you can put power poles inside the building. So let's just one there that shouldn't block access to anything and we'll let them gather resources and collect these structures or build these structures while uh, they work and we'll come back when it's a little closer to night okay so we're just about to enter into uh, the zombie attack and we're gonna try to capture as many as we can in order to do that we need to freeze them and that's what the snowball shooter uh, is focused on doing. And then once they've been frozen, the workers will start to bring them into treatment chambers. Okay, and the horde is just about to attack and we can see here that there are 19 zombies coming. So the first thing we're gonna do is throw our lab into lockdown. That'll make sure that any of our workers will come back uh, to our base and stay inside the safety zone here in yellow. Um, we shouldn't have too many workers out, but this gets them in before the zombies get here. So you'll see these workers start to come back, come through the gate. And the workers inside the gate will continue doing their jobs, but the rest of them will stay here. And some of them will man that snowball thrower, we can add a couple here. Let me clear those trees out while we're waiting. Uh, let's see, we've got, already got two working on the bellow breezer. The zombies are just about to show up. Oh, and there they are. You can see these red dots will show you where they're coming from. Uh, if you had multiple tunnels, 
they might be on the sides here. And they will just come straight at your base and start attacking the fence. But they will eventually move towards the gate. They uh, are drawn to gates. So you will need to eventually keep an eye on some of these fences that get damaged. Um, but as the night goes on, they'll make their way to the gate. And you can use that to your advantage, obviously. That's where you'll put your snowball shooters and any other defensive uh, buildings that you decide to create. And you can see here, one is getting frozen already. And we can specify on the snowball shooter itself the attack priority. So either we can shoot at the closest or the strongest or the weakest. So I've chosen the weakest really so that the snowball shooter will focus on one zombie instead of constantly switching to wherever the strongest is because then you'll never really freeze them. At least not with one snowball uh, thrower. You can see he's frozen now. He turns into a block and he'll stay that way until we bring him in um, and uh, treat him over in our treatment facility. Now this is saying it's blocked, so let's take a look at this. We gotta deal with that. It didn't show blocked when we set it down, but I think what's happening is this worker is now blocking this space. So let's, what, this gives me an opportunity to show you how to move something. It's probably what's happening. So let's just move them over one. It's gonna let us do that? Nope. Hmm. So it looks like what we're gonna have to do is salvage this and then reconstruct it, unfortunately. So I'll do that and come back. Okay, so now this has been relocated. We should be in good shape here. Uh, they should be able to pass through this way. If not, they've got this door to that side. Uh, and as you can see, they'll load it up. Hmm. Oh, because there is a bundle there. But once somebody gets that, hopefully uh, that'll take care of it. Yeah, see, he's picking up that wood. All right, so let's get back to our defense here. Now, at least in this tutorial, um, you'll get through the whole night without freezing all of these. So if you're worried, of, oh, I'm going to need multiple snowball shooters you might but um, when daylight comes they'll actually leave so it's not as bad as it looks um, and we've got two zombies frozen which is good we'll get a chance to see how the treatment works and I'm gonna leave that where it is and just see if it'll resolve itself or if I have to move this power pole hopefully I don't Hopefully it's just that uh, resource right there. All right, I'm gonna speed it up and we'll come back when um, we've got something to talk about. Okay, we can see that it's starting to get lighter. And it looks like we've got four zombies frozen, which is more than we need. See, as a... Uh, as I was saying, they will leave. We've got somebody repairing the gate right here. Let's turn our lockdown off so that workers will now go back out. But if you remember, we added a bunch of workers here, so we've got to take a few off. And let's see the hauling station. Let's just put one of these on just uh, moving frozen zombies. There we go. So he's going to grab this guy and bring him to our lab. All right, now they'll start treating him with wood and blueberries or glowberries. As we use up those resources, they should get restocked here. But that was enough to finish him. So we've got, we've now got one zom zombie human hybrid or a humby. So we've completed those objectives. And 
uh, they'll they'll work just like any other uh, worker. Um, they have other needs like muscle training, uh, which should be the next objective up. So their mood will get low and they'll turn angry and do damage to your lab until you can, um, you'll have to refreeze them, I believe. So uh, a couple things that we can do is make sure they don't get angry by building um, structures that allow them to get those needs met. You can also create a calming station um, and guard uh, guard stations that will they'll have like little slingers that can freeze them. And we also have to make sure that they eat, so they do need uh, meat. The only thing that they that level one uh, human bees eat is the raw meat. So the objectives associated with this are uh, building a skill training room, a leg press, a meat cultivator, and a feeding pile. Um, so let's uh, save some space here in our kitchen. We'll go to our build menu again, go to the kitchen controls, and you'll see there's a meat cultivator here. So this will require food uh, to come in and it'll somehow create meat from that. Okay, so this is gonna need, see the input and um, operator stations there, the feet and the, uh, the boxes with the arrows. So you gotta leave room for that. And then it's also going to need, if we look, uh, if we look in here, See, it takes two power, so we're gonna need to make sure it's got electricity coming to it. I don't think that pole reaches, so let's bring it actually in in case there's other things we need to electrify later. We'll just put it here, right next to it. All right. And then as that meat is cultivated, it's gotta be put somewhere for the zombies to feed. Um, so the, 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 or the, um, the humbies, they won't uh, actually sit down at the table and eat. You have to create a feeding pile. And as you can see, you need some room around it for them to um, be able to approach it. And it will improve their mood by 5% when they eat. So that's going to get us the first, or sorry, the second two. Uh, we do need to set up a training room. They're recommending a 9x6. So we'll look over here. Kind of running out of room. I'll just put it over here. So the training room is down here under the skill training uh, build menu. And we'll just look for, I wonder if we should put it off. Nah, we won't put it off the kitchen. Maybe we can tuck it in here. Let's see. Oh, wait a minute. That's the gate. Let me uh, rotate this. So you know what we'll do is first we'll move this. It looks like it's, let's move this over here. Any major resources, yeah, we can always, so let's move this here for now. All right, and then, then that gives us the opportunity to build in this space here even if we don't connect it directly um, to the kitchen. It's kind of be weird to have your gym connected to your kitchen. <laughs> so, all right, so we're gonna do nine by six. So let's leave, let's make sure we just leave a little bit of room and we'll go nine by six as they suggest. Oh, I don't really wanna wipe that out. Eh, it's fine. So it's gonna take 170 wood. And the other thing we need to build is the leg press. And you can research additional uh, workout items, uh, workout machines here. There's a bench press, a rowing machine, and then eventually a super trainer. Uh, but we're, we're just gonna go with the uh, leg press since that's all we need for the tutorial. Okay, and I'm thinking I'm gonna have them lined up against the wall here, so this takes up two by two. 
All right, and once this is built, and you can see the meat is already piling up over here on the feeding pile, that'll give us everything we need to keep our uh, humies happy. So you can see their moods are pretty good right now, but as these drop, uh, they'll go and take care of that. They'll go work out, for example, um, to bring that back up. So you do need to keep an eye on their uh, mood so they don't turn on you. Looks like we've got one, and you can see they start to defrost, right? So if they get all the way to defrosted, um, then they'll just wander off, you know, because it's not uh, it's not daytime. I mean, it's not, not nighttime, sorry. Here you can see we have one of our humans sleeping. Now that they've refilled the treatment center, they should bring in that other frozen one for treatment. That should give us three altogether. Yep, so he's grabbing that one. I do have some workers standing around. Uh, let's assign some here. Oh, those are probably our builders. Ah, that's right, I'll leave them. So that's our last frozen zombie being treated, so now we'll have three Humies. How close is this to being done? Let's speed this up. All right, and I just noticed the one thing I forgot here is a door. So uh, we do need to make sure we put a door on the uh, skills training room, otherwise nobody's gonna be getting in there. So the room is ready, although it's not accessible. As soon as the door gets built, they'll build the leg press. And then we can move on to the next step. All right. So now we're gonna take a look at how we interact with the Moose Lab. The Moose Lab is where we will send um, our Humbies uh, for research and that'll allow us to progress to the next level level two of the cure You can also request resources back to your lab uh, yeah, That's what this talks to here. So we have the first level of zombie treatment uh, Available to us, but to get to the next level of zombie treatment we have to send uh, humbies and that'll progress us to Having the next level and then being able to build uh, the next treatment center. Yeah, which is basically what this all says. But let's take a look at it. It'll make more sense, I think, if we look at it. So if you go down here to the world map, you can also press F4. Here's our world map. This is the base that we're currently, you know, working with. And we can click on Moose Lab. And we can send uh, all four. But let's let's take a look at science here so you can see we've got cure level one and treatment chamber one but we need to um, progress to cure level two which is going to require a hundred uh, cure progress before we can build the treatment chamber two so if we go to moose lab we can start to we can ship our level one humbies over and for each one we'll get plus 10 so in total we'll need to send 10 to 10 of them off now you can keep some as workers but i'm just going to go ahead and send all the ones we have so we'll get 240 research and then the next night you know probably could take three nights or so um and are there any scientists sometimes there are scientists willing to uh, come work and you can add to your worker pool uh, we don't have those but let's go ahead and grab our some freezing you can request ice packs. Oh, does it say zero? You can request food. Maybe it has to. I'd have to move there. Let's get some meat. Maybe some vegetables. It may simply be not part of the tutorial, but let's, it would it would work. You'll see that in a future video when we just play. And now you can see um, the helicopters heading out to our lab. Now, 
One thing I wanted to point out is uh, on the map, you double click this. The only button here is restart mission and that will restart the whole tutorial uh, or any other missions that you have on the map. You have to go back to your world map and unselect it basically to get back to your base. Uh, that was a little confusing for me at first, so I wanted to point that out. So our workers will keep going and the helicopter will get here shortly. So it's 42 game minutes left. Let's speed this up. All right, so it's closing in. And what'll happen is it'll take, uh, drop a new container here and then take this container away. So our, whatever supplies are coming, will go here. And our workers, you can see them, they're all getting in the container. They'll go to Moose Lab so that we can advance our cure progress. All right, and I think we're gonna leave this one here. That's gonna do it for today. Uh, that gets you through uh, the bulk of the first tutorial and far enough that I think you could start to play um, you know, your own regular game. Um, if you have any questions about this, uh, drop a comment down below. Please do like and subscribe uh, if you'd like to see more of these videos, especially if you're interested in seeing more of this game. Uh, I will make a few more, um, and uh, I'll see you back here really soon. Thanks for watching.